In this morning's Health Watch, a significant rise in hearing loss in teenagers. A new study finds hearing loss is up about 30% over just the last 15 years. That means one in five teens is affected. So why the jump here? Our Dr. Jennifer Ashton joining us with the details. Is it as simple as saying all of those earbuds constantly in your ears and that volume jacked up is eating away at your hearing. We don't know, Erica. You know, when we talk to our teenagers and we think they're ignoring us, there actually may be some, some innate hearing loss going on here. And there are, there's a lot that we don't understand about why teens have problems with hearing. There can be genetic factors. It could be due to certain medications. It could be due to childhood infections or prematurity. But one of the controllable exposures, if you will, is environmental. It's these Earbuds, it's listening to MP3s or iPods at high levels of volume, mm -hmm. high decibels for a prolonged period of time. And that's the only theory that can account for this big jump over the recent it, years. It is, it is dramatic to see an increase of 30% over just yep. 15 years. How exactly, though, does music being loud in your ear, how does that kill your hearing so significantly? Well, you have to understand what happens to sound waves as it goes through the ear. And actually, as sound hits the outer ear and then transmits to the middle ear, it goes through a series of bones and tissues and nerves and cells, and it, and it targets a part in the inner ear that has hair cells with it that vibrate and transmit nerve impulses to the hearing center in the brain. And the thinking is with high exposure, whether that's one time or prolonged, that those hair cells can become down and therefore not be able to transmit those nerve impulses so, to the brain. So it basically kills that. So how loud then is too loud? Well, you have to put it on a, on a baseline for comparison. We measure sound in units called decibels, and a, a normal conversation is around 60. Traffic, loud traffic in a city could be 85. These uh, MP3s and iPods can get up to 120 decibels, that's Erica. right in your ear, It's too. right in your ear. So, how, so then what do I need to do if, if I'm noticing that there could be some problems to know since I don't have a decibel meter with me? Well, first of all, this study found impairment in high-frequency hearing loss, which means that people might not be able to hear certain letters or whispers. They might not be able to hear your mother whispering good night. So those can be subtle signs. But you want to ask your teenager, certainly if, if they're saying that people need to raise their voice for them to hear them, that can be one sign. If they have difficulty understanding someone at an arm's length distance or about three feet away, that's another sign. And certainly when they take these things out of their ears and if they have pain ringing, buzzing in their ears, that is a clear sign that that volume is too loud and they need to turn it down. And then there's things like um, noise reducing headphones that can really help. But you know, when you put these in your ear, Erica, you can hear this volume. I can hear it right now with that in your ear. I can't hear you. <laughs> but I can hear your music. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, always good to have you. And I know, too, one other thing that's been said is it's really important to get your kids hearing tested. They don't always do it in Absolutely. school anymore. So worth giving it a shot since you can't reverse this, this nope. loss. You only have two ears and you need to hear for your whole <laughs> Take life. Take good care of them.